What you just heard was the sound of a crying baby just about to be buried alive. And this will bring me to today's subject and one of the darker practices that has been recorded in human history. And the practice I'm talking about is the practice of infanticide, the killing of babies and children, specifically in ancient pre-Islamic Arabia. Before I go into the depths of this topic, I would just like to say that the absence of reliable historical sources and factual information, aside from Islamic traditionist sources and stories, make asserting the truth about the pre-Islamic way of life and culture in the Arabic Peninsula harder to substantiate if things really happened or not. As there is a clear bias in the Islamic sources against pre-Islamic society in certain regards. However, not in all regards. And in addition, there does exist some sources outside of the Islamic sources about this practice. As pre-Islamic Arabic poetry also mentions it, both clearly, directly and by making allusions to it. However, the most detailed descriptions of this practice still remains in the Islamic traditions. And I do believe that these traditions are at least partially trustworthy. As for example the Quran should have been clearer in accusatory condemnation if it was only about demonization of the pagan Arabs. Yet when the Quran makes calls against the killing of infants it is almost with sympathy for the people that kill their children in these verses as they do it out of need. And the Quran, even if a later date than the standard date of the making of the Quran is accepted, it is still pretty close to these events in time, less than a hundred years. These Quranic verses, together with the poetry that exists, points towards that it is likely that it's true that child killing was practiced. Also, it is not as child infanticide is not exactly unheard of in other cultures. And the practice, even on the Arabian Peninsula, might have not been that widespread, though it was still famous or rather infamous. It could have been limited to extreme cases or to certain regions or groups as a practice. It didn't need to be practiced by everyone, as it should be remembered that the Arabic Peninsula is vast and included a lot of tribes and various groups during the time of Muhammad. As regarding the practice itself, how these infants are killed is not mentioned in the verses that speak about condemning the practice, but in another Quranic verse where it is alluded to indirectly, where it is told that the children are buried alive. An acquaintance of mine once commented that this seemed very ritualistic to bury a child alive and he wondered if this could be a type of ritual human sacrifice. What I imagine could be an argument for this view of this being a type of sacrifice is that the Quran mentions how killing children has been made beautiful for the pagans which could be interpreted to mean some sort of sacrifice. Though the Quran is very unclear here. And it could just be a general statement about the pagan people's lack of morals. Especially with the lack of other evidence for this type of infanticide being a sort of ritual for the gods. However, important to note is that there historically has existed Semitic cultures. That is to say cultures with languages close to Arabic that did practice human sacrifice, if not specifically child sacrifice. Both old South Arabian cultures in Yemen and Oman millennia before and ancient Aksum in Ethiopia a couple of hundred years before Christianization had practiced it. However, both later abandoned the practice. And the practice also included blood sacrifice through cutting with knives and not burials. Further away north, you have the Canaanites and the Carthaginians who practiced child sacrifice in connection to their worship. Here we also have direct archaeological evidence with child graves and evidence of knife wounds 
before burning of the children's bodies, together with contemporary sources. However, these practices were also several hundred to over a thousand years ago before the time of Muhammad. And they also differed in how it was done a lot with knife stabbing of the child and then burning of the body. Of course, these are different cultures and practices can differ a lot over time if they have a common source or in the process when they are borrowed from other cultures. And a counter-argument against human sacrifice is that there has existed Semitic cultures that have not practiced it as well from very early time. However, the strongest argument that I can bring forth against the hypothesis that this is a type of human sacrifice is that if there did exist polytheistic religious reasons behind it, then the Islamic sources, such as the Quran, what I mentioned it, being a pagan religious ritual and not just a practice, much more clearly as a way to delegitimize the old paganism found on the Arabic Peninsula, if that was the case. And it ought to have been described with greater condemnation as a type of shirk, idolatrous, polytheistic pagan worship rather than just killing, in the more mundane, condemnable way that the Quran, for example, condemns it. Also, in later sources, other ways of committing infanticide have been mentioned, for example, in the thick treatises, thick being how to interpret God's way, as well as in the hadith reports about the life of Muhammad and his time that include several other ways that the ancient pre-Islamic peoples of the Arabic Peninsula killed infants and children, such as hurling infants off cliffs and drowning them in wine or in water or leaving them in the desert or in the woods or beating them with clubs until death and many other ways, seeming that there does not exist a consistent pattern to this practice of child killing and that later sources describe more mundane and direct and practical ways of killing children than burying them alive. It is doubtful that there exists some sort of religious tradition associated with the killing of children. Sure, religious traditions could vary from place to place on the pre-Islamic Arabic Peninsula, but still it seems to have been more of a practical matter than a ceremonial religious matter. There is also the fact of a lack of archaeological evidence, as there is no graves in Central Arabia where it seems that ritual sacrifice of infants has taken place. And if it was a religious practice, it is probable that it would have been detectable through archaeological evidence due to repeatable patterns of infanticide and customs of burial in connection to it. It is also entirely possible for a culture to practice infanticide and to do it for entirely mundane reasons that has nothing to do with religion. For example, ancient Rome and Greece both practiced infanticide, but for entirely mundane reasons. In fact, for the Romans and Greeks, invoking the gods in connection to human sacrifice would be seen as barbarous as they condemned the practice when the Carthaginians did it. Infanticide among the ancient Greeks and Romans is well known, so they had no problem killing children in their culture, but they had problems mixing it with religion. So it is entirely possible for a culture to practice infanticide due to mundane reasons rather than religious reasons. And historically, the various cultural purposes of the practice of infanticide in various societies across history has been the reduction of population numbers, removal of babies with physical abnormalities and sick infants, the elimination of social illegitimates, religious ritualistic reasons, and the last one, the preference of one sex over the other due to cultural and social reasons. And it is this last one that I will now discuss. The Quran talks about needs and poverty forcing the practice of infanticide when it speaks about killing children generally but in quran 81 8 when it mentions the buried child it uses the term al mauudatu which means the buried girl it is specifically female 
and later Islamic sources clarify that it had to do with the burden of providing for females in ancient Arabia and to do with the structures of dowry favoring males. In Islamic law it is the man that has to pay the bride and her family instead of the bride's family that have to pay the man and his family as was the case in pre-Islamic times in Arabia. Thus killing infant girls as they became a financial burden to the family rather than a future potential resource for the family made sense from a practical perspective. Especially if the family was poor <laughs> and didn't have the resources to care for the child. And as this makes sense and is a good explanation for the practice of infanticide in pre-Islamic Arabia together with all of the other arguments against this practice being a result of religious reasons I think we can exclude this practice being a sort of ritual sacrifice Hello my viewers I hope you didn't find this video to be too unsettling considering the topic and that you did find it interesting and if you have any questions or comments upon what was discussed in this video please post them I like seeing your comments and also don't forget to push the like button if you liked this video please do subscribe as it would help the channel spread awareness about the humanities